Okay, this evening we're here at my house for a little potting project. And what we're going to be potting is bok choy. And this little guy, I actually got as a cutting from the base of the bok choy that I just bought at the grocery store. So things like bok choy and celery, whenever you cut off that base, you can save it and put it in water like this and get roots to grow on it. So I cooked with where this cutting came from. Um, I cooked with it about three weeks ago. Since then, it's been rooting in water and it's got a pretty good set of roots on it and it is ready to be transplanted. And in keeping with the kitchen scrap theme, I have this empty yogurt container that I'm going to be transplanting it into. And all I need to do is make a drainage hole in the bottom, the little lid for the container, that's going to be my tray. And that's all there is to it. So, I've got a pair of scissors there, but I think a pocket knife will work a little bit better. Let's go ahead and make us a drain hole in the bottom. And I'm just sort of doing that. There we go. That's our drain hole. And what I like to do to keep my potting mix in the container is I always put in some paper towels in the bottom and that just acts as a filter. So let me stuff that in. Got a little bit of water here. That'll moisten that up. And got a Ziploc baggie full of potting This is where it gets messy. So this bok choy, when I uh, originally used it, I was making a recipe called Eggs in Purgatory. And the recipe itself used the stems of, well, it actually called for Swiss chard in the recipe. But the store didn't have Swiss chard um, available. But they did have bok choy, and it works as a pretty good substitute. Um, but the eggs in purgatory recipe itself calls for the stems of Swiss chard, which is normally something that you kind of strip away from Swiss chard when you're using it. Um, but it used the stems and then you made a salad from the leaves. So bok choy was a perfect substitute for that. Okay, I've got the container here about halfway full. And I'm not going to fill it all the way to the top because I kind of want to leave room, you know, to water in around the edges. So let me go ahead and take this. Kind of the roots were kind of starting to circle a little bit. So let me spread out the roots there a little bit and we'll get it seated down in. And I think that's going to work good. That'll kind of keep it growing upward. So I've started celery like this all the time. And this was the first time I had 
kind of experimented with something other than celery. And I was surprised at how well it took off. Uh, in fact, I think it actually started rooting better than celery. But I keep celery growing in my windowsill all the time. And of course the stems don't get as big as the celery would outdoors. But for using in something like spaghetti sauce or chili or a recipe like that, it works great. Now once I get this in and watered, I want to keep it pretty moist for the first few days, but it's kind of a balancing act. Because if I get it too moist, that kind of clump of residual stems, it might rot and kill the plant. So it's kind of a fine balancing act, and sometimes you have luck using this method, and sometimes you don't. But it is worth a try, it's a fun, fun thing to do. And you get a new plant out of one that you've already paid for. So there's really nothing to lose with it. Okay, I don't want to waste the water that I had it rooting in, so I'm going to go ahead and use that to water it. And of course where this is fresh potting mix, that's going to need a little bit more water. And there we have it. So we've recycled this container that otherwise would have ended up in a landfill. And we're also reusing what would have been kitchen scraps and could have been composted. So go ahead, give this a try, experiment. It's really a lot of fun to try.